My name is George Kegoro. I'm the executive director of the Kenya Human Rights Commission. Uh, the current state of uh, freedom of association and assembly uh, is worrying. If you remember what happened uh, as an example of uh, the, the, the worrisome nature uh, in relation to the, that, 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 the exercise of that right, we've had um, a political crackdown against uh, activities of the political opposition and that was evident in 2016 when the opposition started organizing street uh, protests uh, to press for its view of how the how the uh, how the IBC should be handled and that was met by significant force by the government uh, we've had cases of um, um, attempts and uh, actual deregistrations of um, civil society organizations. The Kenya Human Rights Commission was one of the organizations. There has been a repeat attack on uh, the Kenya Human Rights Commission uh, in more recently in 2017. And again, that attack has been positioned as legitimate regulatory action when it isn't, when the, it has not been preceded by due process, when there hasn't been an explanation of why the regulator has arrived at the conclusion um, that uh, the Kenyan Human Rights Commission is in breach of its regulatory obligations. We've had a campaign of vilification uh, going back to actually 2007, a campaign of vilification and slander and uh, uh, defamation against persons who are viewed as not supportive of, uh, I mean, uh, uh, persons who are viewed as political dissidents. They have been subjected to the most virulent um, uh, delegitim delegitimization campaign. All those are things that affect uh, freedom of association and, free and associational life. So you have a misuse of registration powers and a misuse of, um, of, 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 of law and order maintenance powers to be extended to local organizations in areas uh, where the government feels that those organizations should not operate and that is the, the, that is what has characterized associational life in the country the problem we are facing we are calling it the shrinking civic space which is not a national problem but it's also uh, a challenge within within africa and it's also a challenge within almost every country in the world. And it's also a problem with also our partners who are working at county level. So in political terms, actually, this is what we used to call political repression during uh, the times of Moy and other dictators in Africa. But I think from the human rights point of view, clearly, this is a violation to the right to freedom of association, freedom of assembly, expression, information, among others. Um, we have, as human rights defenders, as uh, civil society organizations and generally citizens at large, been having or experiencing challenges in enjoying these rights. Um, last year we had a few um, we, have, we had a few incidences where we had peaceful demonstrations, um, citizens going to peacefully demonstrate and protest on issues of certain enjoyment of rights being violently scattered and dispersed by security agents. So the situation as we speak right now, we are going through uh, a phase, I would say, in a can as a country where we are, citizens and actors of human rights are not able to peacefully and fully enjoy uh, the rights to association, to expression, and to demonstrate fully uh, in our country. Uh, from where I sit, I think um, we're doing relatively well when it comes to legislation, when it comes to frameworks to implement that. As recently as last year, we passed the Freedom of um, the Access to Information Act. Um, so when it comes to laws, we are more or less doing very well, especially in the region. But when it comes to implementation of the laws, um, we've started to feel, uh, and especially from as recent as 2013, um, that uh, these rights are not as realizable as we thought. So in practice, there are very many challenges coming towards us. Um, if you ask very many people in Kenya, we feel that the status is very, 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 very bad. 
Well, uh, I can say that uh, currently the status of uh, freedom of association in Kenya is very is, is actually very poor because uh, the Article 36 of the law is very clear that every Kenyan has a right of forming or joining an association of their liking. But we have seen uh, the government actually clamping down on the people's right of association. We have seen uh, organizations being registered. We have seen uh, organizations be, uh, being denied their, uh, their participating licenses or, or, or certificates without any reason. And most of it, we have seen that the government is targeting those organizations that are critical to the excess of the government. If you look at the freedom of expression, which is again Article 33 of the Constitution, which says that every Kenyan has a right to receive, seek, and impart knowledge, to have a freedom of artistic creativity, academic freedom, and things like that. We have again seen that uh, being denied because we have seen journalists being arrested because of uh, expressing themselves. We have seen several Kenyans being arrested, taken to court because they have uh, expressed their ideas. When you look at Article 37, which is the freedom of association or freedom of assembly, we have seen uh, demonstrations being clamped down because Article 37 is very clear that every Kenyan has a right to a peaceful assembly, of peaceful protest, of peaceful petitioning. But we have seen the government breaking down demonstrations. We have seen the government breaking down peaceful rallies. We have seen people being arrested for assembling. The law is clear that uh, people who are peaceful have a right to assemble anywhere. It doesn't save time. So what I can say generally in terms of peaceful of assembly, I mean right of assembly, right of expression, right of association, in a scale of one to 10, in terms of uh, the status, I would say that we are, if more, we are at three over 10. My, my, my view on the issue of freedom of association and peaceful assembly and expression as enshrined in the 2010, 20, uh, 2010 constitution, and specifically on the Bill of Rights, uh, Article 36, uh, read along with Article 37, uh, guarantees every citizen the right to freely express themselves, assemble, and without any hindrances from any state or non-state actors. Uh, now, one of the things that we have noted as uh, IACSO uh, is the fact that uh, across the region, as uh, there is uh, a trend uh, of shrinking uh, space for civil society uh, operations. Uh, mostly governments are using uh, legislation. Uh, in some cases, like the Kenyan case, uh, the uh, story of the Public Benefits Organizations Act uh, explain a situation where uh, even though civil society and government uh, came together uh, to put together a law that would promote the work and activities of civil society. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the government uh, then uh, decided uh, not to uh, commence the implementation of that law. What that has mean, meant, therefore, is that uh, as Kenyan civil society organizations, we have not been able to take advantage uh, of uh, the provisions of the Public Benefits Organizations Act, uh, which are quite enabling uh, for civil society. And apart from being enabling uh, in the sense of creating a more positive environment, uh, uh, that law also focused on enhancing the accountability uh, of civil society organizations uh, to the Kenyan population, uh, to the uh, uh, registering and regulatory authorities, and also to the uh, development partners who provide resources uh, for the work of civil society organizations. On the question of uh, the current status of uh, freedom of association, peaceful assembly, and um, expression, I think uh, in a scale of uh, one to ten, uh, I would uh, put the state in uh, this, the, the status of these um, three freedoms at, uh, uh, I would say, six. Uh, six in the sense that we are um, much better than uh, many um, countries around us. Uh, we have a strong institutional um, a constitutional framework within which we could uh, um, seek to assert those rights. And I think the constitution guarantees significantly uh, freedom of association, peaceful assembly and expression.
Um, I wouldn't go higher than six because of uh, over the last couple of uh, years, uh, four or so, we've seen uh, the, the, the threats to these freedoms of association, um, assembly, especially when uh, citizens have mobilized and organized to challenge certain uh, unethical actions by public office bearers, uh, the challenge of corruption and the disproportionate uh, response by especially security agencies to either disrupt uh, the constitutional the right to the, the, the constitutional right to um, uh, assembly uh, and uh, to picket I think um, uh, what we've seen is that the state while the constitution guarantees those rights and freedoms uh, the state has occasionally acted in a way that seeks to plow back um, those rights from the citizens I would say that uh, Kenya is increasingly adopting the same strategies that are being adopted by other regimes that I'd consider to be authoritarian regimes like uh, Ethiopia, Russia, where increasingly the whole notion of freedom of association, freedom of uh, assembly is uh, coming under threat. And we've seen this very clearly through recent excessive use of force by the police to break up peaceful assemblies, even when this is really contrary to the constitutional provisions of Article 36 of our Constitution, as well as Article 37. So increasingly, the current state of affairs, insofar as freedom of assembly, freedom of association is concerned, there is increasingly a worrying trend that the government is cracking down on these civil liberties that we had started to take for granted. We had actually thought that as a country, we are moving away from the 90s, where you couldn't uh, assemble without being given permission by the police to where you just need to notify the police. But again, increasingly, if you are to go by the recent cases where we had um, uh, uh, members of the public violently dispersed from Uhuru Park when they, were, they assembled there just to talk about issues of corruption and to uh, express their dis dissatisfaction with runaway corruption in this country, then we have reason to worry that the current set of affairs insofar as freedom of association, freedom of assembly is concerned in our country, leaves a lot to be desired, and is something that we should be uh, increasingly concerned about and worried about. Since 2013, there has been a decline in the realization of the freedoms of association, assembly, and expression. This has been witnessed by uh, the state interference in the citizens' rights to be able to exercise these uh, constitutionally enshrined um, rights that they have so that they can be able to hold the government to account, they can be able to demand for transparency, and they can be able to demand for public participation. And then this was really witnessed um, with the targeting of Muhuri and Haki Africa, um, identifying them as specified entities and linking them to terrorist activities. Soon thereafter, we see the, um, the limitations on the proposed amendments to the Public Benefits Organizations Act and uh, the attempted limitation of the funding of civil society organizations or NGOs or public benefits organizations to 15% of foreign funding, which would essentially cripple the operations of um, NGOs. Never before. Uh, in this republic have Kenyans witnessed uh, administrative actions, unfair administrative actions uh, aimed at curtailing and constricting the, the freedom of association of the people of Kenya, either through individuals or through their citizen formations. Uh, in particular, the civil society has had a very rough time um, uh, trying to organize uh, trying to express dissent because uh, it is the role of citizens uh, to express themselves against decisions and policies of government. Uh, and, and so I would say that uh, in, term, in my own assessment, um, the freedom of association, uh, freedom of assembly and freedom of expression, insofar as they constitute uh, the enabling environment for citizens and their formations, is constrained and constricted in, the, in this republic. Most recently, we have seen the targeting 
of an international non-governmental organization, IFAS, and their operations in Kenya in relation to the 2017 elections, and again, the targeting of um, Kenya Human Rights Commission, which um, the government has been essentially trying to, to silence. So the, the civic space um, has has significantly reduced since 2013. Um, the, the right of people to meet and just to be has been questioned um, uh, repeatedly and systematically. Um, we have had um, um, statements from the highest authorities in the country that express um, a disfavor against um, certain organizations that associate associational life with a regime change, an agenda to support uh, foreign interests. Um, you've had accusations that civil society organizations and the support they have from um, uh, from, um, from from foreign partners that that then constitutes. Uh, an agenda against the against the political establishment and against the na the national interest. So all those uh, uh, examples lead to a conclusion that there is a significant deterioration in associational life in the country and in civic in and in civic space. Um, when it comes to the whole issue of whether the government has done enough to protect civic space in our country. I think the question shouldn't be whether the government has done enough to protect civic space in our country. The question should be the worrying trend whereby the government is clamping down on this civic space. We've had numerous cases. Um, let it be remembered, for example, that a few years ago, like precisely in 2016, 2015, uh, over 500 non-governmental organizations were threatened with uh, the registration. We know the cases of Haki Africa, we know the cases of Muhuri, we know the cases of the Kenya Human Rights Commission, and therefore increasingly the question shouldn't be whether the government is protecting civic space, the question should be why the government is moving the way it is moving to actually curtail civic space. Another pointer to this fact can also be found out if we look at the PBO Act, the Public Benefits uh, Organization Act. Although this act came into place as a collaborative effort by a number of actors across the board, both government and civil society, and indeed, President Mwai Kibaki, before he left office, had assented to this act in 2013 to again show you the attitude of the current government towards civic space, this act has not been made operational. In fact, when um, ourselves, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, acting together with our partners, the Kenyans for Peace, uh, with Truth and Justice went to court to force the government to adopt this, uh, to actually uh, give a commencement date for this act. Um, a lot of progress had been made, and then somewhere midway the line, where this act was supposed to be domiciled, that is the Ministry of Devolution and Planning, unilaterally a decision was made, and then uh, the same mandate was moved to the Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government. So we see a lot of shaking of responsibility between the various arms of government, which is a very clear indication that there is no goodwill to implement the PBO Act. For, for one, we still do not have a law 